So, uh, <coughs> got a lot going on. Uh, so, just Hi, Lamb. Facebook. Hang out. Who is that? Oh, hey, Dee. Marion. Hello, everybody. Just getting on. on Facebook. <laughs> I like the sacred right. space. Who are, did the uh, sacred space? Really... Yeah, I did that. Karen, that was... My Fourth of July effort here. Very cool, Karen. Flowers provided by my husband. Aww. So that was good. That's nice. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning, Lamp. Good... Hey, Dio. Good to see you, good buddy. Morning. Oh, we got Andrew. Yay! Welcome, Aaron and Bob. Morning, Aaron. Oh, hi, Marion and Bob. Oh, okay. I was wondering who that is, and I, for some reason, good I can't. Lord, it's, you go. it's, uh, it's you so go good to see you. Um, yeah, well, we're up at our camp, so. <laughs> oh, how <laughs> cool are. is that? Okay, that's yeah. great. So our friends from Granby, Marion and Bob are on all the way from New Hampshire. We have one more, um, one more uh, state represented here, and um, we have... Uh, Oh, Joseph's in New Hampshire as well. And we got the Pacific Northwest and Florida and the mid Midwest. Ohio. Ohio and how great is that? Springfield, hi Dio. <laughs> so, well friends, we are on um, Facebook now and live and good morning to our Facebook friends as well. And I'm gonna mute all. And just a reminder that we just mute people uh, mainly to make it easier for us to hear one another. And that if any time you have something that you want to say, you just you can raise your hand or there's a little um, under the term reactions. There's a little hand that goes up. We can we respond to that as well. And um, it's just great to see everyone. Like John said, I echo what he said. And I know that everybody makes um, an effort to get here. Uh, Joseph with his uh, in his sister's house up in New Hampshire. And uh, we've been missing Andrew. So we have Andrew back, which is awesome. It feels uh very celebratory always to have Andrew going. And we have some exciting news uh, that um, Faithways will be getting together uh, in person and inviting others. Um, it's an open house and it will be July 15th, um, which is coming up. It's a Saturday. It's not this upcoming Saturday. It's the next Saturday after that. And it'll be at the United Congregational Church in Holyoke. And we're gonna, God willing, do it outdoors. And we'll have, I'm, I'm in between tacos and, and burgers. So let me know what your thoughts are there. But um, I have some ideas. I kind of thought it'd be fun to do tacos because we did burgers and dogs last year. Um, and it's an open house thing. So we're going to invite as many people as possible. Um, and that should be fun. And I know some of you won't be able to make it. And I'm sorry for that. But someday we'll bring Faithways to where you are and do, a, do an event. I could see us doing a Faithways event in Tucson or up in New Hampshire or, uh, you know, in the Pacific Northwest or definitely in Florida at some point. So uh, stand by. We'll hope to do that. And I was lucky to have a visit from my sister, Dee Dee, this past week, and it was great to have her. And uh, my mom is residing in Rhode Island right now. And um, I don't know. We... We might have lost mom. Oh, no, there she is. Yeah, she's residing in Rhode Island right now, and so it's been great to be close close by with her. But peace and grace of God with all, and thank you for joining us. And um, Joseph, can you get us uh, a song, and then um, we'll have a prayer, our, our opening prayer by Anita. Okay, good morning, everyone. You know, this is a little something different today. I've got this large piece of furniture on my lap. This is a harmonium. It was invented in the 1840s in France. It's basically a floor accordion. But the intention was that this would be a way for people to bring organ music into their homes. So in the absence of pianos and organs, this was an instrument that made its way into people's parlors ostensibly for Sunday worship. The colonialists brought the harmonium to India soon after, and the Indians co-opted the harmonium 
and their sacred devotional music, which we know today as kirtan. Kirtan is a call and response form of music where we chant the names of God. So it's kind of interesting today that things are coming full circle. I have this harmonium because I had a gig in uh, Eastern Mass last night near Boston. And I have this, but not my ukulele. So I had a harmonium for kirtan, but now we're having a harmonium for church, which is uh, how it was originally intended. So this might be a little loud. So you're going to have to uh, tell me. Let me go to uh, original sound for musicians. Uh, well, I don't think we're going to need it. Because this is going to blast. This is going to blast. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Lance, you're muted. Lance, you're muted. Lance. You're muted. Lance, you're muted. Okay, you guys missed all that. Jeez, I had yeah. all the profound stuff I was saying. Now I forgot it all. Um, okay, well, anyway, peace to you all. Blessings. Dan, great to see you. Jan, Rachel, Dio, it was good to have you. Sister D. And um, Anita is going to read our opening prayer, I think. Anita, are you there? We may have lost Anita. Um, I may do our opening prayer if that's, yeah, so why don't we just do our opening prayer? Let's take a deep breath. Let's, uh, we'll wonder, wonder where Anita, she might be in the World Wide Web somewhere, but uh, maybe give it a moment. Anyway, it is, I echo what John opened with, which is it's great to see everyone and blessings and it's really good to be here. Let us pray. With our heads bowed, we gather before you, O oh God. We are not one, but many. We come not as male or female, not as young or old, not as rich or poor. We come as one community in your name. We are as diverse as the many colors of the rainbow. But together, we seek to be drenched in your spirit, to know your glory. Through our faith, we call Christ into our hearts, that our souls may become deeply rooted in love, and that we will know with other people of faith the power and the grasp of the mighty works of love. We seek through your spirit to go beyond knowledge, beyond law, beyond human boundaries, 
that we may be filled entirely with the fullness of you, O God. All glory to you, all thanks to you, all power is yours, all riches are yours. We are your children, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And God bless you, and I hope Anita is okay, but we know how this uh, internet Thank thing works you, Lance. sometimes. Thank you, Lance. I just am not technologically uh, astute, and when something goes wrong, I hit the panic button, and I'm pushing buttons trying to find the right one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Sorry about that. Well, Apologize, yeah, so Karen. Sorry for honing in on your action there, but uh, if you uh, can, if you want to do a an addiction or something, we'll come back to you if you want. But anyway, we're glad you're here. Okay, fine, whatever. I'd be glad. You know, you know that prayer. Uh, it, I started to think about the rainbow uh, today, and I was like, huh. I wonder what all the different colors are of the rainbow. And it, I think it starts with red, and of course, it, I think the the final color is like violet and. They've got, somebody's figured it all out, but there's many, many colors in that. And when we come together, that's who we are. We come together with our differences, that's important. We come together with our diversity, and that's what makes us stronger. It actually makes us better. It makes us better as a group. It makes us healthy to be different, to, to not share one, you know, not, not all be exactly the same. We don't want to be clones of one another. We want to lift each other in their gifts. And at the same time, there are some things that do bring us together. There are some things that we have in common. And I think the fact that we, we, we love God, that we're, on this, that we're each on a spiritual quest together, and that in some way we've each found something in faith ways that, that can bring meaning to our lives. And so I think that... Um, welcome know that you're loved we all people no matter who they are are affirmed not by us but by god we are all god's beloved children and we love to come together and practice our diversity and practice our commonality as one and so feel affirmed please at this sacred place and karen has put together a beautiful sacred space for us and i'll let i'll turn it over to you karen i bet you all can't guess how this has been dedicated today <laughs> so this is our fourth of july sacred space um, in honor of our country in all its glory and in all its need so if folks could take a big deep breath in and let it out and just hold some silence for a minute while I light the candles. Hey, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, yes, remembering the 4th of July, a time for celebration, for sure. Uh, and uh, let's see, Dio, would you lead us in our doxology? Dio, are we all frozen? <laughs> uh -oh. I'm not frozen. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna share screen so people can sing along. And uh, thank you, Dio. Hang on one moment. It's a true blessing to be here on this wonderful day with everyone. Um, ask that we bring all our wandering minds and our thoughts and the things we want to lift up and just sing this with me um, from your heart. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, 
and Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessings. All right. Amen, Dio. Thank you for that. And um, yeah, so we come to our time of sharing. And I noticed that, uh, Randy, you have your hand up. So if you want to unmute, ask you to share. And Hey, guys. I just want to say hello and uh, praise God and stuff for today and every day. And bless and i need prayers for the people here and i like to you to say hello to janice hi how are you thanks for your messages you're bringing god bless you and to you janice thank you so much for jumping on there and saying hi we love to see your faces yeah well, i love to say hi love to pray for you <laughs> I'm just glad to be to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're safe. We're safe. We have to just keep our focus. Thank you so much. Yeah, right. thank you, uh, Janice. Thank you, Randy. Blessings. And yeah, Christina. Um, Christina, big week for her last week, so. Yeah, Thursday. Hi, Christina. Thursday. Glad to see everybody. Uh, last Thursday was my second surgery on my mouth. Um, it, it was about the same amount of time in the chair, but I, I have more stitches on the bottom, and I figured that the bottom would be easier. No, it wasn't. But uh, here I am. I'm here today, and I'm so glad to be here. I've been thanking God all morning for helping me through that. And I am so glad it's done. I don't have to worry about dentures until September. So I'm I'm going to be here every single week to see all your faces. God bless. God bless you. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, Christina is our rock. Uh, she does a couple of things Not, besides just being here and and sharing. She also shares this with other many other people, like on Facebook and that kind of thing. But also, Christina is the one uh, person that uh, reads our, well, I don't even know if she reads it, but she compliments, she thanks, she, re she reminds us every Sunday when we send the devotional out that she's going to be here Sunday. And believe it or not, <laughs> that's a good thing. So we thank you for that, for sure. Well, uh, anybody else? Yeah, anybody else that wants to share? Uh, Daniel, yep, uh, you're you're muted, so you'll have to unmute, and then and then we'll... We do want to keep it uh, fairly brief, so if we can. Yes, sir. This is brief enough. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great, Dan. Okay. Yes. Uh, I've had an exceptional week. Uh, things are progressing extremely well. That man who won uh, the $365 million with Powerball, whatever, in upstate New York some time back, got hold of me and he's sending me thirty thousand dollars to promote my project nationwide tomorrow through fedex so i've been more than blessed god's gonna bless the world if we can use his funds to get the world to realize that we're all brothers and sisters of the same humanity and i've got one leaving note it struck me first thing when i woke up this morning if y'all remember 50 plus years ago when Jonathan Edwards said, I'll be damned if he'll run my, I'll run his own life, I'll be damned if he'll run mine. Unfortunately, I hate to use those words on Sunday, but with our Supreme Court, no matter what ideology you have, you know, we need to learn to run our own lives. May the Lord bless us all. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Dan. That's a great reminder. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, bringing that up. And yeah, Dan, uh, we'll hold in prayer, Dan, as well, as he's he is definitely still having some health issues. So we want him to get fully recovered. Anybody else? All right. 
check in. What is well, it? Well, yes, check in. Did you want to say something? Um, I'd just like to say that my surgery was, my eye surgery was successful, and I had my doubts when I was squirming, and they, well, I, I won't go into the gory details, but I had my doubts about the results, and I seem to be seeing fine, so thank God for that. Thank you for your prayers. All right. It worked. Whatever we did. Uh, so that's great. And um, we have uh, Lori has shared a reading with me earlier and I asked her to share it today. So Lori, could you do that? Unmute. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I don't know about you, but lately I have just really been struggling with all the bad news, all the hatred and horrible things that are happening around the world. And even I'm sure we each have struggles in our own individual lives where we come across nasty people or people saying nasty things. And it's just, it can just really get you down sometimes. And it has for me lately. An example, I, um, I helped with a youth um, science camp last week and I was talking to this brother and sister and um, they said they were from Washington. And I said, well, I'm from Washington too. What made you uh, move down to Arizona? And they said, well, we had to move because we kept hearing gunshots from our house and kept finding um, bullet shells in our yard. And that was just like, oh my God, you know, are you kidding me? So anyway, I, it's easy to get kind of discouraged and disheartened. I found this uh, reading that I want to read to you that just lifted me up and I hope it'll lift you up too. It's written by a guy named John Pavlovitz. Maybe you've heard of him. So it's a little bit long, so let's settle in. I'll try to read fast. <laughs> okay, so the letter is from love to hatred, okay? So the letter starts, dear hatred, I trust this letter finds you well. Actually, from the look of things out there, business is booming for you lately. I've got to hand it to you. You've managed to keep yourself in the news pretty steadily. And these days, that's no small feat. Your ability to reinvent yourself is a credit to your persistence and to you knowing your audience. I'll confess, your brand is a whole lot stronger than I'd realized. Somehow, you've been able to leverage all that fear out there into a pretty impressive little cottage industry. To be honest, I've been in a pretty deep funk with all that's happening myself. For a while, I've been struggling to find any real momentum. One step forward, 18 steps back. I'd start to think maybe I was obsolete, like I'd finally become passe, destined to be a dusty relic of the past and relegated to faded t-shirts and power ballads. I was seriously considering calling it a day. But this morning, I remembered something. I am love. I am the glorious, beautiful response to all the havoc you wreck out there. The relentless dawn that chases away your heavy darkness. I resurrect all the hope that you seek to destroy. I am the defiant middle finger raised in the face of death and evil and your pervasive lie that humanity is beyond saving. I am the redemptive song that people keep finding a way to sing together, no matter how difficult the days become. Sure, maybe I've had a rough stretch lately, but I've been through this all a million times before, and I've always been able to answer you. And trust me, I will answer now, too. Let's face it. Deep down, we both know this, how this is going to play out, don't we? You'll grab the headlines and make a dramatic statement and chaos will briefly come and you'll feel and seem like you're winning. You'll get a bit of traction and you'll celebrate for a moment, but it won't be long until I rise up and slowly drive back beneath the ground all the terrible hell that you managed to raise. Like yeast in the dough, I will quietly and silently do the healing work I do, person by person, heart by heart, breath by breath, and then I will be the one dancing. You've probably noticed that I don't resort to all the bombast and theatrics you're known for. That may move the needle and make the news and trend online, 
but it doesn't last. And anyway, it's never really been my style. I prefer to just keep going and waiting because the truth is goodness is humanity's default setting. And when people stop to breathe, when they step away from the screaming fray, when they draw near to one another, they recognize that goodness in the other's eyes, then you're screwed. People will always turn to compassion and mercy because those are the most powerful forces on the planet. And when they do, they find me there waiting. They'll embrace me and I them. Yes, you may occasionally corrupt the system, but I am the system. I am the truth that people know without knowing they know it. I am the deepest sacred place the human heart will always seek at its level, as its level. When hurting, grieving, weary souls search for rest, I am where and when they finally find themselves home. So you can have your eye for an eye and I will keep making peace. You can demand revenge and I'll keep forgiving. You can spew venom and I'll turn my cheek. You can strike with a closed fist and I will stretch out my open hand. You can gloat and brag and feel quite pleased with yourself for the momentary terror you, manu you manufactured. And I will press firmly into that which endures and defeats it. Yes, you are powerful and resilient, friend, but you'll never overcome me and you won't outlast me. No matter what unspeakable damage you do, I will bring even greater healing. And no matter how much you say, I will always have the last loudest word. Trust me on this. Look around you. Look beneath the headlines and the noise. Look deeply into the eyes of those who get me and see how much they're willing to do. My people will not be denied. You can't win this one, my bitter friend, no matter what you or the papers or the fear mongers say. This place is mine. Sincerely, love. Amen, Lori. Wow. Such a powerful reading and how how uh how much do we all need to hear that today uh and for the last few years <laughs> you know but uh yeah and with all that's going on right now it's so uh so important so annie let's see if you're able to do this and if not then we'll we'll turn it over to andrew for now but see if you're able to do your song uh So, Unmute. yeah, she's connecting to audio. Give it a sec. All right, can you hear us, Annie? I can't hear. We can't hear you though. Uh, all right. I'm gonna have Andrew do the song, if you don't mind, Andrew. And then, and then Annie, we'll come back to you. We're we're grateful to have you on, and I know. We're having some challenges on the technology front. Uh, but Andrew, uh, good to have you back. Welcome home. We missed you, buddy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, I've been working the past few weekends, so I've missed you guys very much. And I'm glad to be back. Happy Fourth of July. And uh, let's see. All right. Talk hey now. Max, can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. So if you, why don't you do okay, your song Okay, I'm just now. gonna let it out, my song. I'll tell you what a miracle round I've been on, but you know, God conquers all things. I love the poem, I love the people, and persistence pays off. It doesn't matter how you're feeling, what the struggle, and that's gonna bring me to the song. So here you go. Gonna keep on walking forward. 
Keep on walking forward. Keep on walking forward. Never turning back. Never turning back. We're going to keep on moving proudly. Keep on moving proudly. Keep on moving proudly. Never turning back. Never turning back. We're going to keep on singing loudly. Keep on singing loudly. Keep on singing loudly. Never turning back. Never turning back. We're going to keep on loving boldly. Keep on loving boldly. Keep on loving boldly. Never turning back. Never turning back. We're going to keep on praying strongly. Keep on praying strongly keep on praying strongly never turning back never turning back we're gonna keep on moving forward keep on moving forward Keep on moving forward, never turning back, never turning back. That song was written by Pat Humphrey. I hope you enjoyed it. Hello. Andy, that was spectacular. That was, uh, awesome. Andy. Yep. And, Thank yeah. you so much. That was a terrific job. It was such a good song, too, for this particular weekend. You know, just incredibly inspiring. So thank you for that gift, Danny. I appreciate it. So now Rachel's going to read our scripture for today. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So Rachel, if you want to unmute and go ahead. Sure. Um, and I just want to warn my aunt has seemed to have chosen a whole entire chapter for me to read, so this is going to be long, but um, give me two seconds. Just trying to find. There we go. So this is Genesis 22, 1 through 14. Um, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, his son, Isaac, he cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, the boy, and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood from the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, father, and he said, here I am, my son. He said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, 
God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son your only son for me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of a son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day on the mound of the Lord, it shall be provided. Perfect, thanks, Rachel. It was a long reading, but I hope you all listen to that story um, because it's a good story. You know, it's a story of not, it's not a story that I really enjoyed as a child growing up. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it um, and about that experience. But I think it's a story that's important to tell and to understand a little bit more deeply. So the day after tomorrow, we celebrate Independence Day. Our country is now gonna be 247 years old. We celebrate the birth of our nation, freed from tyranny. But are we really still free? Having won those battles more than 200 years ago, perhaps we face battles that are just as big and stakes just as high as those faced 200 years ago. Are we still battling to preserve our rights that our forefathers won for us? The rights that all are created equal with inalienable rights to life, to liberty and to the pursuit of happiness? Or are we battling our perceptions, our own priorities of right and wrong, our own importance, our own idea of equality? So as we celebrate Independence Day, I'm thinking maybe we should back up and celebrate in Dependence Day. So I want you to think about this. In dependence on the creator who endowed us with all of those rights. When I was growing up, I heard this story of Abraham and Isaac and I was horrified. Each time I heard it, I couldn't understand why I had to go to church to worship a God that would ask a father to seriously offer up his son as a sacrifice for a test. It totally infuriated me, thinking that people were just total fools to worship a God like that. This particular story fueled my fire, which, which eventually caused me to turn away from church and from God for many, many years. I totally just didn't get it. So years later, I perhaps have a bit more insight and a lot more humility. When I read this story now, I see it for what it is, a story to teach about faith and about being tested, not just on obedience of action, on fearing God, but knowing God. Remember that another, the translation for fear in Greek and Hebrew can be translated to knowing, not to what we th these days consider being afraid of. So this is a story to teach about faith, but underneath the action being tested on, living in dependence on God. The story models for us the degree to which we need to depend on God. It's not about a religious fanatic killing his son for God. It's about showing us the extent to which God will go to provide for us. So here is Abraham waiting until he was 100 to have the son he had longed for his whole life, his only son. His only son, does it sound familiar? 
Can you imagine the battle waging inside of him on that journey towards the mountain? On the path upwards with his son beside him? Can you even fathom taking up a knife against your only son? But Abraham did just that. He was willing to forego all of his love, all of his priorities in having a son to succeed him and the importance and status that son brought to him. Never mind the love he had for him. He was willing to give it all up to God. But God doesn't ask for the ultimate sacrifice, does he? He doesn't make Abraham do what God does himself later on, right? When God gives up his only son. The point of this story lies in ultimate dependence on God for direction, for direction of our lives. What this story brings out for me now is that God doesn't ask us to do something that God himself wouldn't do for us in spades. And that God wants us to look towards him for direction in all the ways which are most important to us. To live in dependence on God for that direction in each action, each moment of our lives. Think of it as, as kind of an internal reflex to guide our thoughts and our actions and our hearts. Living in dependence on God is not, as I thought in my teenage years, a cop out or a sign of being weak or blindly following what you're told in church. Living in dependence, living and giving up our self-centeredness to be something better than simply ourselves is about learning how to trust the one who created us and knowing deep in our souls that living independence leads ultimately to true independence, true freedom, freedom from making bad choices, freedom from guilt and shame, freedom from our human failings, which hold us fast to our world, but failings that fall away as we enter God's world. As we enter that world, we become more aware of the responsibilities that go with that freedom. We're not free to run wild, don't get me wrong. We're free in the sense that if we are truly living in dependence on God, our impulses to not act in accordance with God's direction fade away. Abraham lived in dependence on God. As Lance put it in our weekly devotion, Abraham leaned into his faith in God. When that path upwards with his son became very slippery indeed. So what do we learn by the ending of the story of Abraham and Isaac? This story ends with the necessary sacrifice being provided for Abraham in the form of a ram caught in a bush. The place where the story takes place came to be known as the Lord will provide. God provided the sacrifice for Abraham that day, just as God provided the sacrifice of himself, of Jesus, for us much later. The lengths to which God provides is astounding. Because God's ultimate sacrifice of his own son is still providing for us today, teaching and guiding and offering us a new life, freedom, in dependence on God. So in the spirit of in dependence, let us pray with an adaptation from Psalm 13 could join me in a spirit of prayer. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have doubts and questions in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall those doubts and questions rule me? Look upon me and answer me, O oh Lord, my God. Open my eyes so that I'm not blind as to see that you are around me. I put my trust in your mercy always. 
my heart is full of joy because I know your saving help is always there for me. I will sing with joy and thanks for my God has given me so much. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Amen. And so I'm looking as we take a deep breath from our hopeful, hopefully now dependence on God. I'm looking to see if we have a song from one of our musicians. It looks like Andrew, we've got a thumbs up from you. So you go on ahead. Good morning, Karen, uh, great message. Thank you very much for that. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I actually uh, play saxophone and uh, haven't played it in quite a while, but I figured uh, since I haven't been here the past uh, few weeks, I'd, I'd bring some special music today. So uh, I've been practicing a little bit. Um, so forgive me, so I haven't played in a few years, but um, I'm going to try and give you guys a song here. So bear with me. <laughs> instruments here this morning. I love it. So I wanted to open this up at uh, this time for your, all of you to tell me where you've seen God in your life this week or where you've been God's hands this week and any other prayers that might need to be lifted up by our group this morning. And I see Randy, you have your hand up. Yeah, I want to I want to say hi to Andrew for, for one and another. Um, where I saw God this week is we just celebrated one of the residents' 100th birthday the other day. Amen. Boy, 100 is definitely to be celebrated. Christina. Where I saw God this week was in, in the fact that I, I really didn't fear that surgery that I just went through. It was it was weird, but um, I I clenched onto the chair handle, so <laughs> it was it wasn't like it was totally pain free because it was. But I'm on my third day of recovery for that from that, and I seem to be doing quite well. I'm eating, and and um, my face, my skin looks better. I feel better. I'm sleeping better at night. So this is where I've seen God this week. And the other place I saw God this week is that my sister, who has been suffering with sciatica um, the last week or so, actually drove me to um, Lake Mary to have my surgery on Thursday, basically in pain the whole time. So I, I, I thank God that she was able to drive me because I don't know if I would have went if she couldn't. <laughs> so, and I'm glad to see everybody. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Dio. Hello, everyone. Um, I just want to thank praise God just for living another day, having another day for my family um, life, health, and strength, you know, it's not perfect, but, but I'm still here, but it's a blessing for me because on Tuesday, I'm going to be celebrating 
my birthday. And just to be able to be here another year with you guys, just to be able to, to watch the rain when it falls and just to have, have even the trials and tribulations when you have them is a blessing because it lets you know you're alive. You, it lets you know that change is, is possible. Um, love is possible. Um, anything is possible if we just keep ourselves in line with the things that um work with us so um for my daughter she's um keeping her prayers up she had this wonderful interview she's just waiting for them to let her know uh, when she's starting her job and just for my grandson he is stepping up he's going to be going into fifth grade um it's just every day is a ah uh, moment and i just thank god for that amen Beautiful. Thanks, Dio. Anybody else have a quick word? Deb? Annie, can you hear me? Oh, oh, Annie? Can you hear me? Yeah, do you have a quick one? Yeah, a quick one. Uh, let me see. I'm grateful, you know, Lance, thank you so much for inviting me in. Uh, prayer is the answer for Shana. I know she had her eye operation. And I love the Torah portion today. I love that he asked, you know, to, to, whom God gives little, he expects little. To whom God gives much, he expects much, much. And uh, I feel that in my own life. I have to be willing to let go of all the material if he asks and to follow his lead. And uh, do we have time for one quick short song? One quick one? I think right now we quick don't, song. but we can catch you after after we're done the worship. No, I'd no, love no, to have we're you good. send us out. But, Thank you. Thank you so much. I love the Torah portion. Thank you, everybody, for being there. And uh, I'm just grateful that I was asked. And I'll, I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much. All right. We'd love to have you stay on, Annie. Um, Deb, did you have? I do. Thank yeah. you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to ask for prayers for my stepmother. She, um, I think I mentioned they, we had a party for the, my father and stepmother's 50th uh, a few weeks back. But right after that, she, she started not feeling well. She's going through a lot of tests. Um, and my father has become her caretaker in a lot of ways. Um, and I mean, she really was even, it struggles to get out of bed in the morning and he has to physically Get her so you know they're going through tests and she's waiting and it's just a, a hard time so cheer, uh so please prayers for my stepmother joanne and my four-legged buddy bella too if uh, she's starting to fade she's lance and shana's uh look-alike dog you know, ellis um they're both they were both golden retrievers around the same age and i just wish dogs lived longer that's for sure so just Appreciate your prayers. Thank you. Amen for that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, if everyone could take a big deep breath to hold all of the prayers that we need to hold in our hearts today. Lord, you have gifted us with some amazing four legged friends. Please be with and help heal Bella for Deb, Ember, for Megan, and all of those four-legged friends who mean so much to us. Please hold our 4th of July celebrations in safety. Keep all of those who are celebrating in good health as well as in good humor. Thank you for the birthdays, the music that goes with them, for the life, the health, and the strength that you give us. We ask in particular for the families of Lance's cousin and for Joanne and her family as they struggle through health issues, hold them close and give them strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I'd like to have everybody on mute. And if we could do the Lord's Prayer. And then after that, Randy, I'll have you do your serenity prayer. That would be great. Our Father, Our Father 
Amen. Amen. Randy. God, grant me to the serenity to accept the things that cannot change, the courage Amen. to change the can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Amen. All Amen right. Thanks, that. Randy. I'm going to have Lance mute everyone one more time here as we move into our communion. And I would like Everyone, if you've got elements, bring, go ahead and, and grab them. If you don't, that's okay. And take those elements in your hands and ask for God's blessing. As God blessed Abraham, as God blesses us to this day. We remember his son, Jesus, who the night before he was betrayed, broke bread with his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body that was broken for you. Do this in the name and the remembrance of me. And when he was done, he took the cup and he said, take and drink, drink all of you, each and every single one of you. And when you drink it, remember that this is my blood that was shed for you and drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, as we give you the gifts that we have, the offerings that we have to give to you, we thank you for the gifts that you return to us. The gifts of life, of love, of liberty, of freedom. We thank you this day, amen. And I'd like all of us to remember that we have what we know as a Faith Ways Fund that is here for anyone who we can find who needs it. Sometimes it's harder to give it away than to hold on to it. So we would love for you to identify just one person out there that you might know who is in desperate need that might need a $200 gift from our fund, um, you know, just let us know. And also to remember that as we go forth today, our real offering is ourselves as always. And I, every week when I get on, I am just in awe of what I hear each and every one of us doing. Um, you all are just doing the most amazing kinds of work and it just is so affirming to hear that and to hear the stories every week, so thank you. So at this point, I would love it if we could have Joseph. I think you have another song. All right, we'd love to hear it. And then we might have time for another one uh, after the benediction. So Annie, if you want to do another one after the benediction, we could do that.
right, Joseph, thank you so much. And thank you everybody, Karen, for a wonderful message and, uh, and our sacred space and everyone for participating and um, lots of uh, variety of music today and variety of voices and really special. Friends, as we go forth, we are going to keep on walking forward. We actually are love. We chased hatred away. Let us chase greed away. Let us chase vanity away. We are love. As we go forth, let's go forth with love as our guiding light. Amen. Peace be with you. And I think, Annie, if you have another song and you yeah, want to can do you it, hear me? that would be it. We can hear you. Yes, we can. Now we can't hear you. You, you muted. You were fine. Wait a minute. Can now you hear we, me now? Yes, we can see you. you can. And... Okay. So many songs, so little time. Uh, let me see. I'm thinking about this. Um, like I said, I've had a cold, but I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. Peace be with everybody. Hey, man. All right. Well, I uh, it was great to see everyone today. You're really beautiful. We had thank you for those who uh, we haven't seen for a while. It's good to see you as well. And then um, you're free to unmute now and chit chat. And we can all you're you're, you're we can get a little messy now that. <laughs> so. All right. I'm gonna Anita, go. I don't know if you have something. That you... I'm back to my crochet, getting ready to do my donation. In the winter time. All right. Nice. Thanks, Christina. Keep healing. Love it. I forgot to ask for prayers for Phil today. He's got side oh. effects from the oh, medication. It's okay, Jan. We'll keep we him in prayer. Yeah. We got you. Dan, <laughs> show us what you did today. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's that's wow. Crazy. Oh, that's that's crazy. crazy. Can you see the doorway? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Jan, do you do you have do you sell those at all? These are for my art medicine year-long training program I'm in. So it's just healing me. But any of your pieces? Oh, you... I have a hundred mandalas for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there a way to see them? Do you put them on a website anywhere or anything like that? I don't have a website, but I can do a uh, live. We can do a FaceTime if you want me to walk you through my gallery. <laughs> well, I, that sounds great to me. Okay, I love good. It. It's a virtual art tour. <laughs> Let's make a date. <laughs> sounds like a good plan. That's great. Uh, and Andrew, it is so good to see you again. I, I sincerely missed you. It is. Uh, and Rachel, it was wonderful to, to have you on, and, and I hope we get to see you again next Sunday or down the road. Thanks. Yeah. It was great to be on. Yeah.